Good evening. Good evening, welcome. And I'm introducing Kengo Kuma, who's uh, practicing architecture in Tokyo. But in fact, he is an itinerant architect. I see him in Taiwan, in Austria, Switzerland, New York. He said he just came from Chile, going to New York, and then Winnipeg. And he just travels all over the place. And uh, I'm very excited to be able to introduce him. As one of the most productive contemporary architects in Japan, his body of work encompasses globe and the pace at which he introduces innovative concepts and idea is rare. He's also a prolific critic and a writer on the subjects of architecture, cities, and society, and is often in dialogue not only with fellow architects and journalists, but also with scientists and other cultural figures. For Kuma-san, we call him affectionately because in Japanese his name rhymes with bear, thus evoking both endearing images of the fearsome ones, but he is more like a fox than a bear <laughs> or the hedgehog as identified by Isaiah Berlin. Kengo Kuma is an architect unaccepting of status quo and instead looks at architecture through various lenses of oppositions, posing challenging theories such as erasure of architecture, weak architecture, invisible architecture, and non-formal approaches, appearing contrasts such as fragmentation and continuity, revelation erasure, and more recently has investigated a contemporary redefinition of organic architecture that unites body, matter, and the environment. He's adventurous, willing to take challenges, yet most importantly, he is an open-minded intellectual. Kengo Kuma is also a professor of architecture at Tokyo University, a position held by prestigious predecessors, such as Tadao Ando, Fumihiko Maki, Arata Isozaki, Hiroshi Hara, and Kenzo Tange, among others. It is the ultimate position of establishment, yet Kengo Kuma's style is far from one that is pre-established. He's an exciting figure in architecture because uh, his form of style is recognizable, but in addition, he approaches every project with a fresh insights. In other words, he is distinguished by the clear legibility of his thoughts, processes, and convictions, the how and the why of his work. Coming from the height of an economic bubble in postmodern architecture in Japan, he is one of a few architects who not only survive, but who practice it reversing a course to come to terms with the end road of monumental historicism. His open-minded attitude and willingness to take risks, coupled with survival instincts, has made for several different phases in his architectural practice over a relatively short period of time. In lieu of a narrow, even unpredictable path, he has chosen and mapped the trajectory of his inquisitive and energetic practice into a fertile field of ideas. His work ranges from small-scale innovations in materiality and techniques such as Chokra Plaza, KXK Dome, or Floating Tea House, to mature architectural masterpieces including Museum of Hiroshige Ando and Nezu Museum. More recent international projects include Granada Performing Center, in the new Victorian Albert Museum in Dundee, Scotland. For an architect who long viewed with suspicion the false sense of security and predicted a crisis in our culture of concealment, March 11, 2011, the day of infamy in recent Japanese history, provides him another opportunity to reset the position of architecture in society. The title of his lecture today is After March 11th. Please welcome Kengo Kuma. Uh, thank you, Molly san, for uh, the very kind in introductions uh, about beer. beer. <laughs> and uh, also, um, the Molly san, san, thank you very much for inviting me to the, this great university. As a topic of today is as a, after March 11, as a top, uh, it's about What's happened after disaster? And, uh, 
and the, what is the lesson from disaster. <coughs> so I want to start from uh, this image. This is a, a Lisbon earthquake. It happened 1755, November 1st. And the, the more than 50,000 people died the, by this big earthquake, and, uh, and it was a very, very sh sh shocking disaster for Europe. And, uh, as a, and many things happened after that disaster. As a, for example, this kind of new direction started. As a, you know, this, uh, those uh, as architecture, as a, it is called a visionaire architecture. And uh, that direction started after Lisbon. As, a, as the, those architects uh, wanted to use decorations, uh, they, they as a, the geometry is, is there as a criteria of design, and the geometrical, scientific design is a new was a new direction, and that direction is going to the, the internationalism, and uh, local BJ was deep as deeply influenced by this kind of direction, and also for urban design, so after Lisbon, people wanted to have this kind of safe and the geometrical city. So they hate the chaos of Lisbon and uh, they, as a, as a, as a, their chaotic narrow street looks very dangerous for them. Mm -hmm. And as another as a big disaster was happened here, as here, and here in Boston, in Chicago, as uh, 1871. And not so many people died, but as a, it was as a as always a very shocking disaster. As most of the building in Chicago as a, uh, as a, uh, devastated by the big fire. And the, this kind of direction happened after the Chicago big fire. The strong concrete and steel buildings uh, and uh, as a, as a big building as a, be, became possible by this, this, this concrete, strong structure. And then going to that direction, you know. And in Japan, and the same thing happened. It's a big earthquake, 1923. And it's, it's in Ginza. So if you know Tokyo, it's, it's the center of Tokyo. And <clears throat> so most of the buildings were uh, torn down as well by the big fire. And it's, it's a very few buildings survive. And, uh, and before that big, uh, big earthquake, the Japan, Japanese cities were the cities of wooden buildings. The one story and two story buildings with narrow street was, uh, was it the typical landscape of Japan. But I like that landscape very much. <laughs> but so after that big earthquake, the Japanese government the changes the regulation drastically, and that the new policy of the government was to make the concrete city, city of concrete. The, and the, as a, at that time, the, it was not bad, but the many things lost, especially relationship with the place, and the lost after that disaster. And uh, then finally, as uh, last year we had the, the, the disasters. It was Ish, Ishinomaki, as a, it's a north of Sendai. And I took this picture by myself, and uh, it was like that. The, at, the, at that time, um, on that day, the, I was in Taiwan. And uh, the, just after the earthquake, it's, uh, earthquake happens, uh, the, at 2.46, and just after the Taiwan news started to show the, 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 like that. And I was so shocked. And I tried to call my family and tried to call my office, but there was no connection at all. And, and, uh, and I, as after that, I began to think about what is the lesson that big earthquake. And uh, in 1990s, the, uh, 
that I think something already happened in Japan. This is a birth of bubble, was 1992, and uh, and. Uh, the 1990s was economically very bad the, the era for Japan. And this was my first project in 1990s. And this looks like the, the mountain <laughs> that I designed, this mountain. As I, dis, as I can explain, as a <clears throat> this white line shows as, as a, as a the cut, the cutted lines. The the mayors of this village prepares the flat land for me, and his idea is to create the concrete monument on the flat land in the beautiful mountain. Uh, it's a kind of typical mentality of the politicians in Japan 90, before 1980s. And but my solution was like that. The, I want to recover the mountain as it was, the, the concrete, the, and the, the earth, bring earth again, and the vegetation again. <clears throat> and so finally, so we, we could go back to this situation. The three years after the completion of the building. As a, and this is my favorite image of the project. <laughs> but but the architecture magazine, the GA Shinkichiku, didn't use this <laughs> this picture. <laughs> so for them, this is a nothing. Nothing happened. But nothing happened is the is a, is a, is a goal of this project. As a, a next as a project is a, is very similar. That is Kitakami Canal Museum in Ishinomaki, the city I mentioned. And here you can you can find the project. The, the, the two third of the building is buried, is, and only one third is on the ground. And this is Kitakami River, the Kitakami Canal, as <clears throat> a historically very important canal. And this is a, the museum, and this is a, 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 the walk, a, the walk, walkway along the rivers. It, this is a kind of a tunnel, and the tunnel is used for exhibition space. And the Kitakami Rivers, as the Ishinomaki City here, <clears throat> and this is entrance from Ishinomaki City. And Ishinomaki City, the, the disaster happened, and uh, I, I almost as uh, a as a as a, as a, as a, as a shock that the, to see the the images of Ishinoma, what happened in Ishinomaki City. And I tried to call this museum, but of course, no connection at all. But two weeks after the disaster, the suddenly the connection recovered. I could talk with the museum, and they said, come on, son, we are okay, we are saved. But uh, why? <laughs> I, I said, why you are saved? They said, the, the river, if the river is winding, the one side was devastated, but another side was okay. It's a, it's a nature of tsunami, and that and, a, and this side is okay. This is the bottom of the tunnel. And uh, the three weeks after the disasters, as a, I still remember April second, I visited the museum, and the building was fortunately okay. But but I stand here. But the landscape was totally changed. The, the this side building was almost destroyed, and uh, surprisingly, the water looks like flat. So because uh, the land of Shinomaki City is all the dropped one meter, and one meters. So all the city dropped one meter. It's, it's unbelievable. And that means the water level is at least one meter. And then it look, looks like flood. And I, I understand how nature is strong. The, the architecture uh, cannot, cannot resist 
The only, th only thing architecture can do is to respect nature. And uh, that is a big lesson uh, from that disaster. Uh, next story is about the water glass project. It was completed in 1995. So this project started from this small box. And this small box was designed by the famous German architect. His name is Bruno Taut. He came to Japan in 1933 uh, because the, uh, that year uh, the Nazis uh, took over the government and uh, Bruno Taut should escape from Nazis. And, uh, <clears throat> and he came to Japan and the and uh, he spent three years in Japan. And uh, so the first day, as uh, he visited as uh, a Katsura Imperial Villa in Kyoto. So probably some of you, some of you already visited beautiful villa. And this is a entrance. Entrance. It's a it's a unique hedge. And in front of this the hedge, he suddenly. As a began to cry down, and pe people are so surprised. Why you as a cry so much? Not in the building, but just in front of the hedge. And 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 he as a, and he said, uh, this hedge is my the the ideal the relationship between nature and artifact. Please look at the bamboo. The bamboo. Is just bended, not cut. The bamboo and the, uh, the, this the, uh, the hedge are combined together. It is almost melting, and uh, and then the Bruno Taut found the ideal relationship, nature and artifact in this from this hedge. And uh, he also was, uh, admired by this. The veranda of Casa Villa, <clears throat> and he wrote about Casa Villa. Casa Villa is a, is a shows ideal relationship between nature and artifact. So for Japanese architecture, the, the, the theme is creating relation between nature and artifact. So, as a, uh, this is very different from Western architect architecture. In Western architecture, to create the unique shape is a goal, but in Japan, the, the shape is not uh, not the issue for a designer. And as a, the story is going back to uh, to this wooden box, as a, and also he also designs as, as a small as a products in Japan. And he loves the craftsmanship of Japan very much, and, he, and this small box is a, was by him. And uh, he he had a small shop in Ginza. It's a shop name of the shop is Mirates, and uh, and uh, my father I don't know why he bought this wooden box in the shop of Ginza, <laughs> and uh, it was his treasure, and so whenever he drink beer, so he, he brought that box and he, is saying, he was saying, this is a great, the design by great German architects. And, uh, but, I, as, uh, but I couldn't understand so, so why Bruno Taut was so <laughs> important. But uh, as, uh, still, as, uh, I, I have this wooden box in front of my desk. So always Bruno Taut is, is looking at me. <laughs> and. Uh, and he designed Bruno Taut. As besides those product design, Bruno Taut designed this as a small house. And this is the only house he designed in Japan. And this is Hugo House, as a completed in 1936 in Atami, and in front of Pacific Ocean. It's, uh, it's, it's trees, but uh, as a, uh, behind that is a Pacific Ocean. And and in that house, he, he wanted to create the relationship between Pacific Ocean and the building. And uh, this door is, it was very unique at that time. He brought the special hinge as a, uh, to open it, uh, to fully open it. And he, as a, 
as a, he likes he designed that special sections as a, uh, to get the special view from the upper side to Pacific Ocean, and in ta in tatami space he also designed that sections, and as a, he used the, as a bamboo for the uh, the wall of this space, and he designed those items. It's very special items. Those chairs can be uh, can be hung from the wall. It's very similar to the sh shakers, Chinese chairs, and, and but the, at that time, 1936, no Japanese could understand his design. So, as 1936, the, 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 the modernism style of Colombian Mission uh, style was very, very popular in Japan as, as well, and uh, Jap as a Japanese architects uh, couldn't understand what Bruno Taut did. And Bruno Taut was so disappointed, and then he decided to escape Japan again. He decided to go to his, uh, Turkey. And, the, and, uh, and he worked too hard in Turkey, and uh, after two years, he passed away in uh, 1938. Uh, this was his house. <coughs> he did he did his house in Japan, and uh, uh, as, 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 as the existing house was here, and he only designed the, this part of the house, and uh, it is a kind of hidden house, invisible house. And the story is when I designed this as a, as a water glass villa. As a, I went as a, uh, a first time I visited the site, the, the, the woman from the next house as a, talked to me, and if you are architects, please come to see my house. And I couldn't understand what he said, and he brought me to that house. And it's, it's, it's a living, it's a living of the house. And suddenly there is a. This, the secret door, and and it is it is like the house of a spy because the secret doors and, and she showed me this hidden space oh, and the, I was surprised I could design the house just next to Bruno Taut house and I dis decided to study Bruno Taut again the, and I learned many things from him. So this water as a reflecting pond is homage to the bamboo terrace of Katsura Villa. It's, 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 it's a connecting landscape and the building. And this is the entrance. And the next the, uh, the building is also important for my career. It's, it's a Hiroshige Art Museum. And this is a, as a Hiroshige's masterpiece. And uh, as, a, as, a art, as some art as a, as a historian as a explained that in this as a, as a art, as a, as a Japanese uh, philosophy on art is clearly shown. The no perspective method is here. In Western painting, always the, the deepness of the space uh, was represented by the use of perspective method, but in Japan, as a as a as a in Japan we didn't use perspective drawing method, but the super juxtaposition of of layers as a, a several several layers exists here, and the super juxtaposition as a, makes space deep. And another as important thing is the lanes. It's a, it's a straight line. But in Western painting, the always the lane is very ambiguous as, a, as something. It's as architecture and the building is geometrical and very straight, but the lane is soft and ambiguous. And, uh, and this is another example of a juxtaposition. And that method shows the how Japanese as a deeply think that nature is a part of our life, 
Nature is not out of life. Nature is in our life. And this is great as artist, the Vincent van Gogh, so he respected Hiroshige very, very much. And he made the copy of the, that wood block. As a, and also he wrote about Hiroshige. And he wrote, I respected Rembrandt, Hiroshige, Cezanne. And this is a big three names, this is Hiroshige. He, he included Hiroshige, one of them. And probably the Goho learns the, some method from Hiroshige. And another great uh, the architect uh, who respected Hiroshige is this guy, Frank Lloyd Wright. As a, as a, as a, please look at the carefully this uh, drawing. As a, as a method of this drawing is, is very similar to the Hiroshige's wood block. So rearing, super juxtaposition, the melting nature and artifact. <laughs> and the, as a, in, as a, when he as a, wrote his uh, autobiograph as a, before he passed away, as a, he wrote as a, two Japanese as a, artists uh, has influenced me very much. Without them, I, I couldn't find my method. And the two Japanese, is one is this guy, Okakura Tenshin, the, the author of this, the book of tea. And another the guy is, of course, Hiroshige. And he loved, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright loved Hiroshige very much. And, and actually, he often the, the came to Japan to buy Hiroshige's art, as a, and he, as a, and he, it's a kind of a trade, and he sold the Hiroshige art to his rich friends, and to get the money. <laughs> and uh, as a, if and I heard the, the in Boston Museum, as a, there there are a big collection of Hiroshige, and most of the, the Hiroshige in Boston Museum. So. Was, was coming from the Frank Lloyd Wright collection. And this was my Hiroshige Museum. This is, and uh, I also want to create a kind of super juxtaposition. And the, as a super juxtaposition of the, the village building as a mountain. The, as a, this is a void as, a, as I penetrate the building. And this is Hiroshige Museum. And this is a typical urban design of Japanese village. <clears throat> so this is main road as a, as a village center is here. <clears throat> this is a mountain called, called Satoyama. Satoyama is uh, meaning is village mountain. And uh, before 20th century, the life of the village is, was fully uh, De de depend on the mountain. The material of the buildings are all came from the mountain, and the compost is coming from the mountain. And the, for agriculture, the mountain was very necessary, and also the energy, material, and everything came from the, the village mountain. And then they built shrine in the mountain. And the message from the shrine was respect the mountain. As a result of the mountain, we cannot leave. That was a strong message of Shrine. But in 20th century, people forget as a, as a mountain. As a mountain, as a life of the city, it was totally separated. Oh. As a people, as a, as a, as a forget the mountains, and then they look at Tokyo. As all energy, all material, as a, all resources came from Tokyo. That was the 20th century's uh, sad system. And my message is to look at the mountain again, and then the, I get, I have this hole like that. So this is a hole, this is a mountain, and the entrance is here. And uh, the visitors as a, as a, as a, have to look at the mountain from this point. But the, uh, but the, uh, the clients, the mayors, the, uh, 
uh, did, uh, didn't like this entrance. He said, parking is here. Why? So the entrance <laughs> is not here. And I said, I, the, if the parking is here, the entrance is here, the people they ignore the mountain again. Then I, as I can as, uh, get the solution here. As, uh, and for this project, as, as, uh, another topic is the material. As a material, as I want to use a local indigenous material as possible. This is the sections, and the, those wood and the stones, uh, <laughs> the stone uh, rice papers, the, and the, as most of the material of this building the, came from the, from this village. And the Japanese carpenters are always saying the best material is um, the wood from the mountain behind the project, as we as uh, we. We followed the wrestling of the carpenter. And the next project is, uh, is also the uh, as a as a light project. As a, and please look at the material. As a, when he came to Japan to design this building, this is a, just before last earthquake. As, a, as a, he asked the Japanese as a construction company to prepare to show the every kind of stone of Japan. And he chose that stone. It is a Oya stone, it's the name of the stone. It's a very fragile, soft stones. And people are so surprised. It was stone, that stone is not good for gorgeous, expensive hotel. But the, as a maestro, he, he didn't want to hear the, the suggestion of them, and, they, and he, as a, he strongly insists to use that stone for the project. And he said, the, the, the softness is important for Japanese building, as a, and, so, and then the architecture and the landscape as a, will be melted. That is his as an idea. And uh, the, 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 this is my project, but the location is very close to the quarry of the Oya stone, that stone. As it's a refurbishment of the old warehouse. As a, I, I, I want to as a, emphasize the, the softness and the uh, porousness of this stone. So, so my idea is that structurally, <clears throat> Uh, to, uh, the stone is working as a compression material. The, the, uh, this is uh, the steel plate. Uh, it works as a, as a tension, and the stone is, uh, is wor working as a compression. And both it's a composite structure, and both materials are, are working together. And uh, he's my engineer, and he <laughs> checked <laughs> by his foot. <laughs> and uh, this is... Uh, uh, interior. Uh, this is a new uh, extension uh, as a, the same structural system. <laughs> as, uh, another material is adobe. Uh, <clears throat> as, uh, this is a, as a, as a building I found in that village. But it's, uh, it looks like the, as, a, as a very standard as a building, but it is not. So usually, the, in Japanese building, structure is wood. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the clay is as on the, as the wooden structures and barely thin cladding. But this building, the thick wall itself is a structure of the building. It is adobe structure, and it is very exceptional in Japan. And, uh, and this is also another example of adobe structures. It is very, very exceptional in Japan. And as I decided to uh, do the, the regeneration of the tradition of this special village. And, but for earthquake, we should combine steel plate and adobe. As a, it's a kind of composite structure. And then the, we can get those slate. And the contents is uh, National Treasures in the 12th century is Buddha. 
And another material is bamboo. Uh, so, so Bruno Tao to like bamboo, and I also like bamboo very much. But difficulty of bamboo it is, is if it dried, it is easy to get cracked. And as a, as our idea is to use bamboo for the, as a framework of concrete. And bamboo is not decoration. So we uh, the insert the metal, uh, steel, uh, uh, steel uh, the columns into bamboo, and then pouring concrete. And uh, as a finally, as a, as a, it is a structural system. And we always uh, the, the, the make this kind of mock-up uh, to compare the dimension, material, and, 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 and finally we, we choose this for this building. And this is a, the bam first bamboo house I did. And uh, the floor is like that. And, the, and then the floor is very transparent, and the, as, of, as grandfather first people, for the people can communicate very easily, <laughs> and, and also it is very good for the health. As a, as a food is very. <laughs> so, uh, and the second part of the house is in China. It's, it's, it's Great Wall. It's very close from Great Wall. And uh, at first, I didn't want to cut the land. Because in 20th century, the people always cut the land so on the flat land, so they make sculpture on the flat land. But in this case, the, 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 it's orig it's a, the original landscape, the building is following the landscape. And a great wall is here. And uh, this is uh, as a very important void of the, of the building. This is a void. I, this space I called it void. And uh, in Beijing Olympics, uh, the film director, uh, Chan Imo, as a, he loved that building very much, and uh, and he he as a, shooted this building for his commercial film, uh, so advertisement and film over the Olympic. And then the, the and and then this building getting very popular in China. Uh, probably 2008 it was possible, but now Japan, China, as you know, the relationship is not so good. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. And the next project is uh, as a, as started from the small pavilion in Milan, Italy. This is a small pavilion. So I asked to design a temporary pavilion. As a, and it's for one week. As a, as, a, as a, this is a hint of the project. It's a, it's a children's toy called Chidori, and this is a, as a, as a kind of three-dimensional joint system. As a, uh, as a, this is a three centimeter by three centimeters wooden bar, and a, so it was cut like that. And, f and the first bar, and second bar, and third bar, and after the twist the second bar, and it's finished, <laughs> and, it's, uh, and it's fixed very tightly. And it's a very smart system, without any nail, without any joint, and with metal, and without any glue, the three bars are uh, tight and uh, tightly fixed. And uh, we brought those as a, as a bars from Japan. And as a, my students as a, as a, could complete this building as in five hours. And the next dream is to as a, adapt this system for permanent uh, building. As a, in Tokyo University, as a, we tested as a, these structures. And our uh, the professors, as uh, Sato, uh, he, he was he is very good at this kind of wooden structures. And uh, his as his as the answer is, if the wooden bar has uh, the, the section of six centimeters by six centimeters, it can support uh, this uh, this height, ten meters. 
And the thickness of the wall is around two meters here. And this is a realization that, and this is interior. And the, the thickness of the wall is two meters, and then in the centers, uh, there is a glazing. And, and this is interior, and this is exterior, and, so this, and also this is a flame as a, is used for the box to exhibit the items. So, so after that, so I'm very much interested in that kind of the construction system. And to use a small element, the start from the small element, uh, going to the big hole. This is a bridge in the village, and uh, this space is used for the museum. And uh, this is a, it's a bridge at the same time as this museum. And on the same village, is a, we designed this hotel. It's called Malushe Yusuhara, and inspired by this is a small is a, is a hat. The material is the same, so it is uh, such. It is, a, it is openable as a windows, actually, and is, it can be rotated to bring natural wind to interior space. And that next is a, for the very unique client. <laughs> the location is also very unique. It's a Dazai Futenmangu, one of the major shrine of Japan. Uh, this is shrine, and this is Starbucks. <laughs> the, as our idea is, is the same as the, the museum I told you, that this is not decoration. This is the structure of this building. This is a, a, a construction system. And this is very complicated. So if it is 90 degrees perpendicular system, it is not so complicated. But if it is like this 30 degrees, 60 degrees, the joint is, is such complicated. Uh, like, like that, the joint was like that. And uh, we calculated the total length of wood as a bar, and uh, it's more than the, uh, four kilometers, three miles, more than three miles. Only, only in that small building. And uh, our recent uh, the two projects is uh, Asakusa Culture and Tourist Centers. Uh, also in front of the important temple in Asakusa. This is Asakusa temple, and the, the, it's a very famous gate, as a gal uh, galleria called as a Nakamise, and this is a gate. As a, our site is here. As a, th this is a model for the competitions. Uh, the basically, it's eight houses. So eight houses are piled up like that, and then we can create some continuities of spaces. This is a section. And uh, as in 20th century, as a, this kind of building always had the flat floors, and this, this, this repeating the same space, but this is not like that. And also the space between roof and the floors can be used for as machines. This is a nighttime view. Uh, this is a new as a, a sky tree towers more than 600 meters. But uh, I don't recommend you to go there. <laughs> uh, this is a, as a roof terrace of the building as a, to get the view to the sky, sky tree tower. And uh, this is another new project, it's Nagaoka City Hall. So this is the location, Nagaoka Station. It's uh, uh, two hours from Tokyo by bullet train. And, uh, and usually, the city hall in 20th century is, uh, was outside of the city. It is isolated concrete box. Is, uh, 
the never connected with the city life. But for this project, the, the mayors would like to get the city hall in the very center of the city. And our proposition for, uh, for him is the building, it is not a building, it is a doma. And doma means uh, as a courtyard in the house. And this is very important communication space for the, the uh, traditional house. And this is doma, typical doma. And the, uh, the material of doma is earth and very warm and the people can get a different atmosphere from th that space. And the, I use the same material for the, for the courtyard. And also I use uh, uh, the uh, indigenous wood as for the facade of the building. And uh, this is, uh, is controlling natural light. And uh, as a fun, uh, the important theme of this project is sustainable building, uh, as a carbon emission reduction is, is the theme. And, uh, and also the, as the top of the, as the roof, uh, we have uh, the photovoltaic panels. And uh, I don't know why, but the, the, the people of the town really loved, loved that space. And, uh, and first week, as a, this is a, the automatic controlling the the photovoltaic panel system, like that. The detail is like that. As a, as a, this system is controlling the ventilation and the, as an angle for natural light, to get natural light. And as a, after the completion of the building, the mayor of this town, the, every night, he called to my telephone, mobile, <laughs> every night. And he said, Kuma-san, again, many, many people are coming. Every night, many people are coming to that city hall. <laughs> this is city hall, but people love to come to, to this place. And this is a, uh, 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 the space, is a meeting space, is, a full, uh, is open to the plaza as well. It is very transparent as a politics. And the reason is we are uh, adapting our method to the different context. As a, as a, our first as a big French, French project is Besançon City Arts and Cultural Centers on that site. As a beautiful river and the existing building and the city, as a, we want to combine nature and the city. The building is is like that. The vegetation on the top and the semi outdoor space as a void is connecting nature and the city. And this is the, the void so we are proposing. The material is wood again so it's, because it is very close from Swiss border and it is easy to get the wood from Swiss. This is semi outdoor space and the it's a uh, the combination of as uh, a uh, conservatoire and uh, as a modern art museum, and then the student of conservatoire as a, can play piano and can sing in this space. And uh, next project is Flak Marseille is completed also next year, and I found this material in Marseille. It is a recycled glass. The effect is very uh, translucent. It's, uh, it looks like the Japanese rice paper screen. This is a detail. Uh, the, uh, the, the planning is a, is a, like the spiral. It's a narrow street of Marseille is uh, getting to the top of the building with some semi outdoor space. And the uh, next project in Italy is uh, in Na Naples and the stone, again, so it's a quarry. This is not my design. <laughs> the quarry is like that. And, uh, and the, this is a plant. And if the seed as, 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 
uh, can find a place. So naturally, the, the plant grows from the street. So my idea is the building will be naturally as a, uh, as a, uh, can, uh, uh, can get as a plant on top and everywhere. And I asked the Italian stone company to do the special, to think about the special detail. The stone is, name of the stone is Tufo. It's a very, very soft volcanic stone from Besvio. And uh, as, a, as a we combined that stone and the stainless as a mesh and epoxy, and then so we can fix the stone like that. And the next project is the Granada Performing Arts Center in Spain. The, the inspiration from that fruits. Uh, the name of the fruits is Pom Granada, and the name of Granada City came from that fruits. And the, the city has this beautiful building, uh, Alhambra. The, new, so the special Islamic geometry exists here. The not perpendicular geometry is just uh, and uh, our solution is the fruits like that. It's just honeycomb structure. And each grain is, uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, has a special functions. And uh, totally, it's support that as a honeycomb is supporting the building. And this is also for interior, as a people can as a, as a see the honeycomb structure. This is structure of the building. And also there's a total, there's <clears throat> a big auditorium with 1,500 seats uh, is divided into 30 small paltel, paltel is a small spaces. And uh, Victoria and, uh, and about uh, Dandy Scotland is, is uh, inspired by this uh, natural uh, cliff. Uh, those small element uh, uh, shows uh, some the history of the place. So our idea is, is that this is not stone. This is precast concrete uh, piled, piled up as uh, precast concrete. As again, this is a void, so which connects the city and nature. This is a void. This is a hole. And besides those as a bigger project, as a, we are doing the small experimental project with my student. So this is a tea house in Frankfurt. As a, probably you know the Richard Myers as a design museum in Frankfurt. As, as this, as the director of the museum, museum asked me to design this, this small tea house. And uh, as a first proposal, I showed him the tea house with wood and the, the earth. But he said, no, don't use natural material. Is, is so why? <laughs> His answer is, is, a, is a, it's, in the, it's in Germany. The vandalism of Germany was terrible. And, uh, and he's, he asked me to use strong material, concrete or steel. But, but I, I said, I am not Tadawando. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't want to use the concrete for tea houses. So, and my. Uh, <laughs> And my final answer is, as a building is built when it's necessary. And uh, it's a kind of inflatable building. As in, in 15 minutes, so we can build that building. And then the, the, the membrane should be very flexible and soft. The name of the membrane is Tenala. This is a plan, and the, you, you see the, the strings, uh, which is ties as exterior um, as membrane and interior membrane. 
Uh, so uh, you can see strings which is connecting the two membranes. This is a typical Jap as a small door, Nijiriguchi of tea house. The dimension is, uh, by the rule, the dimension is 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters. This is fire, um, four foot water. And this is entrance. And next month, as the project is K by K, and, uh, and the material is, it is for the Hara Museum of Tokyo, and this is also very unique material. The name of the material is shape memory alloy. And the, and the uh, shape memory alloy is, is a very expensive alloy, and uh, it changes the shape as according to the change of temperature. So this is a structure. This is a structure. The diameter of the, this, uh, uh, this material is just two millimeters and fixed by this is a special plastic element. And it is very, very soft structure and then we need this kind of as a core uh, to fabricate this building. And then it's very, very transparent. And this is entrance, a small door. And uh, so this day, the temperature is not so not hot. And then the top of the, the structure is uh, dropped like that. And then as a, as a, uh, it depends on the temperature, it, it changes their own form. And next project is for Mil so Milan Triennale, as uh, called the Casa Umbrella. The theme of the Triennale 2008 was Casa de Tutto, House for Everybody, and, uh, because uh, some uh, disasters, hurricanes, or tsunami happened before 2008. And if you are Japanese, you can understand the meaning of this uh, building, Casa, because Casa, in, in Japanese, Casa means umbrella, and then the Casa de Tutto as a, means Umbrella house for Japanese, and uh, and uh, I I could get the hint from that joke. <laughs> Sometimes joke joke is very helpful for the project. And uh, the idea is this is a, is a house made by fifteen umbrellas. And uh, it is a kind of the house for refugee, and if we prepare a um, special umbrella so for my house so we can we we 15 can make the pavilion by ourselves so, so mathematically uh, we studied Buckminster Fuller's Fuller Dome and the, the Fuller's idea is uh, uh, that 20 as a, as a facet can make one dome but in our case, it's 15. The secret is those, uh, the, those triangular element. This is a triangular element. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it's a very fashionable umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> and the 15 student as a, as a, as meet together to make the pavilion. And this is the interior. And uh, you, you, pro you, you probably you can see the secret of those triangular element. It's openable as a openable window, and structurally, as a uh, this, this is uh, very smart because so we utilize the strong uh, the membrane as a tension as element as a as a flame as a compression element. Then the two material are working together to support that building. And in the case of Buckminster Fuller Dome, he only utilized the flame, but as a, our idea is different. This is a window. As actually, we can live here. 
as a force, 15 as a people, as a species, enough. The next project also starts from Italy. Mm -hmm. The hint is, is this polytank. It's, it's used for construction site, constructions. And uh, our idea is to uh, put water for the bottom, for the foundation, and the upper part is light, is, is vacant. And uh, the so second version of that polytank house is Water Blanch, it's is exhibited in MoMA 2008. This is a, is a new version we made by the use of this as a die and the, the process. And that is, is in new version, we have two valves. And that means the waters can flow in the, in the wall. And then the, the water and floor heating and for the cooling is possible by the use of this uh, the system. This is the exhibition in MoMA. And so after the exhibition of MoMA, we, as we made this experimental house for Gallery Mine in Tokyo. This is a system. This is an ex external heat co collector and the hot water is, uh, is, can be provided from that heat collectors for bed, wall, kitchen, and bath. And the self-sufficiency is a theme of this project. It is another big lesson from the earthquake. As the earthquake, the, the, all the infrastructures was out, were, were out, and, uh, and, the, and then the, I found, we found how weak the Japanese infrastructure system. I don't know American infrastructure system, but Japanese infrastructure infrastructures were so weak. And then the, the, we, we should think about the possibility of self-sufficient system. This is in Tokyo University, and this is interior. Uh, this is kitchen, <laughs> bed. <laughs> But <laughs> and uh, the only one material is is uh, making that, and also the as a, as a we can generate by ourselves. And uh, next experimental project is called Memu Meadows in Hokkaido. As we got a fin hint from this house. As a, as a, it's as a, Ain, Ain people as a, well, living in that kind of, as a, a cute house. So material is with bamboo leaves, and also they, they uh, utilize the, the heat of the, the earth, and even in summer they're using this fire, fire phrase to heat up the land, the ground. This is our as a experimental house, and uh, the, basically it is also the house of membrane. The structure is wood, but it's a, we have the space and the, the covered by the membrane and the, and the fireplace in the center. And this is a, is a heating system of the house. And uh, the client of this project is the Rixiel Foundations. And uh, they bought a big land in Hokkaido, and uh, and they decide to uh, make the eco village in that land. And every year, as a, as a, they they plan to build the one eco house every year, and the designer as uh, will be uh, cho uh, chosen by the comp international competition and. And uh, we are planning to invite uh, the U.S. schools uh, for the competition and. Uh, as a, and a, and year by year, one one house, and probably so in ten, ten years, it's that the, uh, the land is a, is a kind of uh, ec experimental eco village, and uh, so we want to do the, some a workshop or something between the universities. 
And next, as already is a, as a Keio University is a student is, is, is designing the house for the, the next house, next land. And the last project I show you today is EJP project. It's East Japan project. This is not architectural project. This is a, as a, as a project, the product design project to support the craftsmen in Tohoku area. So they also as a, uh, very much damaged by the earthquake and tsunami, and we give them as a special design. This is a as the same system, Chidori system for shelf and the chairs and the furnitures. And we also invited those young designers to give them the design. And for example, so we are working with this the woman. And so and this is and this is his rice paper as a kimono. This is a, it's a beautiful, as a, as a, she knows as a, a special technique to use rice paper for making kimono. As a, this is a product we are uh, working with her. And also this is a, as a bottle for sake. <laughs> so, so she made as a, this kind of bottle as a, by rice paper. It's a water to as a rice paper bottle. And uh, through that project, so we want to uh, revitalize the Tohoku area. And, uh, and now the Japanese government uh, cannot make the final master plan for the, for the, for the place. And the very, very slow as a, and, and the weak government as it's a big program. And then so we want to start from the bottom. The start from the bottom is the theme of our practice. So, so for architectures, we want to start from the bottom, just from start from the small element to the big hole, and uh, start from the bottom. Start from the place is, is very important for the period after disaster. Thank you very much. very much for a wonderful, amazing, and very enjoyable lecture today. And I'd like to see if any of you have questions to uh, Mr. Kengo Kuma. Everybody is, uh, I, I, are you raising a hand over there? Oh, no. Anybody? I think, yes, there's one question. Yeah, you mentioned at the very beginning that there was, uh, or you presented at the beginning the um, the imperial palace with the bamboo hedge and how the bamboo was actually just bent instead of cut to create this archway, this entrance. Do you feel that any of your projects have reached that level of integration? <laughs> you, you work so beautifully with materials and blending them and you know, very natural materials. Do you still see yourself striving for that beautiful level of integration? Mm, yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, that kind of the integration is is very difficult. <laughs> it's a very high hurdle, but uh, because the, to control nature, to control the the as uh, a plant, is not so easy. But as a but one day, one day, <laughs> I can do that, I believe. Any other thoughts, questions? Yes, please. Yeah, I There's somebody over there. Please. Yes. Can you hear me? Um, what comes first to you? Is it a narrative form or a material? What comes first for you? Um, is it narrative, form, or material? Narrative. narrative. Form or material. What is more important for you? All is very important. <laughs> not, that, uh, not difficult. Uh, it's difficult to uh, get one, pick up one. 
the integrate integration is always important narrative forms uh, i want to integrate everything in one project okay. yeah, one very back. please hi thank you very much for sharing such a wide range of different material manipulations um you mentioned uh after the fire in tokyo um how steel architecture really took off also in Chicago. Uh, what do you think, if you consider these different material manipulations to be almost seeding a kind of architectural vocabulary into the world, what do you think is going to take off in the post-tsunami uh, architectural landscape of Tohoku and, and other places in the world? Uh, the big lesson from the tsunami is uh, the the structure of the building itself not so important. If we build, can build a strong concrete building in a bad location, it, as a, it will be as a destroyed. And uh, the most important thing for architectural design is to find the appropriate location. And uh, probably the, the research is very important for finding the good location, and also find the, finding the good material. The, it, not necessary to use concrete for every building. And uh, that, that is uh, the biggest lesson I got from Tsunami. And, uh, and then I decided to open the possibility of a different material, and after that. Yes. I, <laughs> Do you consider yourself one of the a new generation metabolists? <laughs> <laughs> ah, the, <laughs> the met, new generation. So, uh, the metabolists is uh, uh, I know them personally. As a very, very, very interesting people. As a, and still, as a, still, as a Max is very, very active. And uh, the beside him, as a, I cannot name, name new metabolites. Uh, and uh, I, I think the, uh, as a, the, the problem as a, of metabolism, metabolism is the size of the the capsule, size of the grain. The it's too big for the uh, the circulate, natural circulation. So, so, so I want to find the this, this possibility of a small grain. And if the, we can also find the, the appropriate size for environment, the natural circulation can, can happen. And uh, in that sense, so what I'm doing is a kind of metabolism, but it's a kind of, <laughs> not new metabolism. Um, I have a question, and the most important and the most interesting part of Japanese architecture to me seems to be this relationship with permanence and transience, right? And your work is so eloquent in the way it speaks to both those aspects of nature and destruction. But for the most part, you work in very non-dense, non-urban environments. And as somebody who teaches in Tokyo, and you know, Tokyo has a very interesting relationship with cyclical rebuilding with earthquakes and fires and whatnot. So now these tall skyscrapers or sort of larger multi-story buildings that you now create in the middle of a very bustling city, like the most bustling one on earth, how do you imagine that aging or recycling? And where do you think in situations like the tsunami, which, you know, there could be another earthquake in Tokyo. We don't know. It can always happen. How do you imagine architecture evolving to address things like that in a very dense fabric? Yeah, as, a, as a, we also, as a, uh, doing the design in, in the dense as a, as a context, uh, like, like Tokyo, for example, I show you Asakusa project. It's, it's the very center of Tokyo. Exactly. As a, and also we, 
we are using natural material for that kind of dense context. And, uh, and uh, so I think probably the situation is the same as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a distant area. And uh, aging and the recycle is always the, the target of our design, and this is very possible in the center of Tokyo. And, uh, and as a, as a, as a, for the bigger skyscrapers, is as a, as a probably is a, as a, the hurdle is getting higher and higher. But still, as I want to as a, uh, do the similar method for that kind of project. Um, just another part to this. Is it true that in Tokyo, and I went on a fellowship, and I don't know how much is true of what I learned, but there was this rule that I came across that all these real estate buildings that are built in downtown Tokyo have an X amount of years to be taken down in. So I think it's 50 years for commercial or 30 years or something. And after that point in time, they take these buildings down and they have to be redone to keep the real estate prices up. Is that uh, correct? <laughs> I don't think so, as a, but as a, as a, but as a, uh, as a as a average as a lifespan of the Tokyo's building is the 25 or 30 years, I heard, I heard with that. But as a as a probably it is for the old older building built before 1960. Before 1960, the construction the level and quality was was very low, and the life as a, of the, those buildings is, is short. But the now the, the life is getting longer than before, and, and it's the same as here, I think. Thank you. Maybe one last, uh, <laughs> one last question. Um, hello. Yeah. Um, in your projects leading up to the Chidori and then afterwards, it seems to me that the, the projects leading up to that have a very strong uh, material and structural experimentation. And you also showed all these explici explicitly experimental projects, which I think were done after that. And I get this impression that up to a certain point in your practice, your, your professional practice is very led by this experimentation and then this academic experimentation sort of takes on that role and your projects are a bit more, I don't want to say conventional, but not so much about experimentation. So the first question would be, is that true? And the second one would be, is the fact that you were able to experiment took that uh, drive from your professional practice or did the need to experiment arise from maybe taking on larger projects that were not so easy to sort of experiment with? Mm. Yeah, and basically it depends on the situation. And uh, but <clears throat> but recently, so I, so, as a, for us, the the dialogue between the experimental projects and the the more as a practical project, the the, the, the di dialogue is is, uh, is getting more important than before. And so, uh, the, as I started teaching in Tokyo University for for. Uh, three years ago, and uh, and uh, as uh, after that, the the our practice and the research in the university is uh, deeply connected, and then the, those are the results of that collaborations, and uh, probably in futures I want to uh, make collaboration closer and deeper than before. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>